Welcome everybody to yet another call. Uh, today we are really excited to have, uh, you know, uh, one of the few people I really respect in the space, uh, who's, you know, doing amazing things, especially with, uh, you know, when we talk about Bitcoin adoption and Bitcoin use cases. I think Yusuf is a classic example of, uh, you know, people who are actually using Bitcoin uh you know to impact uh, the continent and and i i think i should just let yusuf introduce himself and tell us who he is you know uh and how he got into the space hi yusuf hello thank you so much for having me uh david uh you know thank you for the opportunity to speak about the work that we're doing uh, my name is yusuf i am the co-founder and director of philanthropy of the built for bitcoin foundation and my journey begins 13 years ago when I first came to the continent of Africa. My destination was Rwanda, but my journey was one of self-reflection. And when I went to Rwanda to learn about what happened in 1994 during the genocide, I learned about the reconciliation project that the country had. In my mother country of Afghanistan, we've always had many internal issues and problems. And I looked to the people of Rwanda as an example, as a template on how people can change through forgiveness and to support one another. So through my experience that I had there for about a month, it changed the trajectory of my career. I went back home to the United States and uh, changed, uh, you know, my intention of wanting to become a doctor uh, to wanting to be out in the world, working on the ground with the people, getting my hands and my feet dirty. About 10 years ago, I started my very first nonprofit. It was called Zamzam Water, building water well systems in Africa and Asia. And then in the year 2017, I was raising funds for a very significant large water project. And uh, a donor had made a, a, a fairly significant contribution to our, to our website. And unfortunately, it was flagged as potential fraud because of the financial platform that we were using at the time. So what led was me to reach out to this person and thank them for their contribution, but also to ask them, is, is there another form of payment that you can make? They responded to me via email with one line, do you accept Bitcoin? And I had no idea, David, what Bitcoin was at that time. So just like anyone else would, I went onto Google and I typed in, what is Bitcoin? And so many different things came up, as you can imagine. Many negative things, some positive, but a lot of, you know, money laundering and you know, funding of terrorism and this and that. And I said to myself, do I really want to get involved in something like this? You know, I'm traveling the world, going to conflict areas. I don't want to involve myself. But what I did do was I asked this person on the, on, on the email chain questions and they responded to me with answers that I could really utilize, especially for my nonprofit. Through our conversation, I was orange pilled via email because of this, uh, because of this, uh, of this contribution. And the person on the other side of that email, David, was Ray, Ray Youssef, who you are very familiar with, co-founder of Paxful, uh, and also the co-founder now of the Built for Bitcoin Foundation. So Ray orange pilled me, he showed me the orange light, so to speak, on how Bitcoin can be the great equalizer for the entire world. And uh, one of the aspects of our foundation that I am so proud of is the financial literacy aspect. In every project that we accomplish, whether it's water, whether it's uh, building a school, providing healthcare services for communities, there's always this aspect of financial education. And on top of that, Bitcoin education. So the past six years, we've built and repaired over 13 schools and Bitcoin technology centers around the world. We operate on four different continents and have affected the lives of over 250,000 people around the world through the power of Bitcoin. Amazing, amazing, amazing work, Yusuf. Um, I've always wondered how you two guys met in this way. At least, uh, thank you for clarifying that. Um, so, so, I mean, uh, just uh, zeroing in on, on the initiative build with Bitcoin. Uh, how many of those schools that you built are based in Kenya? Maybe we can break down a bit uh, the specific countries, how many of these schools you, you know, built in? Uh, absolutely, absolutely. So the first school that we built was in Rwanda. It was a nursery school. And so our school systems are based on nursery and primary schools. 
um, the land that we build the schools on is actually donated to us by the community. And this is important. Land is extremely valuable, uh, not just in Africa, but everywhere around the world. So when you have a community who's willing, David, to come in, in halfway and create some type of equity uh, or provide some type of equity into a project, that helps with the sustainability aspect of all of this. Because we as a foundation cannot be there every single day. So the connection and the relationship that we have with the community is of the utmost importance to us, right? So we built two schools in Rwanda. Then we went over to Kenya and built two schools there, a nursery and primary school in Machakos County. I was actually just there last week to meet with the children, to meet with the parents, meet with the community leaders, um, because it's important for me and us as an organization to continuously build on the relationships. We have also built schools in Nigeria. We built a BTC center in Ghana. Uh, we built schools in South Africa, El Salvador. Uh, we've operated in India, Indonesia, North America. So for us, it is certainly a, a global approach, a holistic global approach to what we're trying to accomplish. All right, yeah, I think I saw the pictures when you're in Kenya. Um... Uh, you know, I was really hoping to visit one of these schools, but uh, I think over the years I've also seen parks, parks who, you know, being being involved, um, you know, with Ray particularly on this. So, yeah, really good job on that. Just to go back to build with Bitcoin, uh, are you saying these schools are 100% built on donation that you get? And are these donations specifically in Bitcoin? We are a 100% grassroots initiative. Um, all of our contributions come from Bitcoiners from all around the world. Um, there is no contribution too big or too small for what we can operate with. Um, we have a saying within the organization, every Satoshi counts. So uh, regardless if it's a small amount or a large amount, it all has an impact. And so what we're trying to Kind of facilitate and implement to the world is that bitcoin is money simply put it is the most sound money uh, that's ever been around and if we want an equitable future for everyone on an equal playing field then we have to fix the financial system and bitcoin is a way a mechanism a tool that people around the world can utilize so that they can be included in the financial global system. Our way of showing this to the world is by building infrastructure, is to take a humanitarian approach because Bitcoin has many use cases, David, many use cases. And many people think that it's a speculative asset. I do not look at it as such. I look at it as, as a humanitarian tool that has been given to us that we need to be able to amplify and highlight it's, it's benefits. And one way to highlight that benefit is through relationship building, uh, through the implementation and, and, and structure building of schools, water projects, um, you know, just overall educational programs in very, very rural communities. Why? Because those people matter as well, David, not the people that just live in the capital cities. Right. The people in the rural isolated communities, they matter just as much as anyone else does. And Bitcoin is the tool and the vehicle that we can take to be able to reach those people. Thanks for, for, for that. Um, so I know you, 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 you've been in Kenya. Uh, you've also been in Ghana. I think you are the Africa Bitcoin conference in December. Uh, tell, tell us about your visit there. I know you also have a, a Bitcoin technology center in Ghana. Tell us a bit about that. I want to give a huge shout out to the owners of the Africa Bitcoin Conference, uh, to our sister Farida, our brother Al uh, Walalai, uh, Prince, and all the others that were a part of that amazing event. I really can't wait until year two later on this year. Uh, Ghana was an extremely special experience because I felt as though many people that I interact with and know, they were finally able to come to Africa and have this experience that I always have. And that is an experience of hospitality, that is an experience of warmth, um, an experience of positivity. And to speak about something like Bitcoin, where um, 
we are all on an equal playing field. It doesn't matter where you come from, what you look like, uh, and where you live, we all have uh, an opportunity, the same opportunity. And so the Bitcoin Technology Center in Ghana is located in Kumasi, which is about a four hour drive from Accra. And this was a symbol, a symbol of our appreciation to the continent and of the conference itself. So we sponsored um, Built to Bitcoin Foundation through Ray's generosity. We were, we were able to sponsor the ABC conference, but we wanted to create a different type of mechanism through just funding the conference itself. How about leaving a lasting legacy? Something that you can point towards and say, you know what? In 2022, the first annual Africa Bitcoin conference, what was left to the people of Ghana was this Bitcoin technology center that has access to laptops and internet, electricity, and just a community center, so to speak, um, where people can meet and greet each other and build community um, in an effort for them to not only get to know one another, but for them to get to know Bitcoin a bit better. Bitcoin Technology Center, um, I think uh, the press release say that it's, it's really a space for people to learn about Bitcoin. I remember, I think uh, you had a, uh, some elderly people, you know, during the lounge, you know, uh, did a really great, you know, lounge video. Tell us a bit more about that. How, how did the community, you know, receive that? Oh man, I'm just getting, I'm getting goosebumps just thinking about it because it was, it was a phenomenal event. Um, you know, a lot of the work that I do, David, a lot of work that we do at BWB has tremendous effect on the community. So it's important for us to have that open line of communication and transparency with them. And the way that we accomplish this is to engage with them as much as possible, both in person um, and and not. And so for me, we uh, we took 20, 25 I, people, I believe, from the conference itself, from Accra, on an, excuse me, on an airplane to Kumasi, people that had never even been to Africa before were now in a community like Kumasi and beautiful, beautiful thing. So it was an opportunity for them to be able to verify the work that's happening on the ground. And so the elders welcoming us with open arms, it was the best honor that I could have ever received. And our metric of success as an organization is not the number of schools that we build or the number of people that we are affecting. It's the quality of the impact that we're making. It is the quality of the individuals that we are working with and, and how they feel about the project. Because again, we're not there every single day. They're the ones that are living in that community. And if they are not on board with the project, it will not be a success. So it is safe to say that after that event, the inaugural event that we had, I think it was close to 300 plus people that were there. It was a, it was a joyous occasion. But to me, as long as the community is happy, that's what makes me happy. All right. Uh, I really feel bad I missed that because I think uh, your team had reached out and, and I was actually joining the party. But I think it was, I, 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 th I think everybody really wanted to come. Uh, so yeah, what an event. Now talking about uh, not profit initiatives, uh, we all know about the new initiative that uh, you recently launched called Nones, a P2P you know, focused platform uh, really targeting the global south. You know, for people who, who've heard about it, uh, but they don't know what it is, can you break down to us what is Nones, uh, why you launched Nones, and what problem you feel it will solve for the global south? Nones is a project that's been, that's been ongoing behind the scenes for quite a while. Uh, the inspiration for it comes from being boots on the ground and trying to understand and learn the pain points that people in the developing world, in the emerging world, however you want to describe it, um, have. And before I learned about Bitcoin and started using it, I never really truly understood or thought about, you know, having issues with financial payment rails, for example or being able to send money 
internationally from the United States, anywhere around the world. I didn't focus on these things that were a problem for me. But when I, the more and more I was on the ground and learning and hearing from people directly that this is a, this is a real problem. Um, not being able to financially communicate with your neighboring country, let alone a neighboring continent. Um, it was something that I didn't truly comprehend until I heard it from firsthand experience from the people. And so I thought to myself, well, why is this the case? And it's because that there is not enough financial infrastructure, unfortunately, for people that live, for example, in Latin America or Africa or even Southeast Asia, for that matter, when in the West, we are very financially privileged. We have so many options here in the United States, from the banking system to digital money, et cetera, et cetera. So to create a platform that that solved everyday problems for everyday people was something that I definitely wanted to be a part of. And to allow Bitcoin to be the underlying, you know, translator, universal translator of money, so to speak, that was extremely important for me in the mission. I'm very much mission focused, David. So if there is no uh, intrinsic value associated to what we're trying to accomplish, I don't necessarily have any interest in it. But I know that in this situation with Noons, it creates an opportunity, financial opportunity for people that may not have it beforehand, whether they don't, whether it's access to a bank, whether it's access to a smartphone, for example, um, whether it's access to um, different payment methods that, that I am, have access to, or maybe even you living in Nairobi, for example. Um, but I think about those people in those isolated rural communities that we want to be able to utilize this platform eventually one day, God willing, so that they can too be included in the financial global conversation. And so for me, everything begins and ends with communication. So for us, it was important for the Noons project and platform to be a financial communicator of sorts, to allow you to communicate freely with an, another individual um, from a financial perspective. That is really what sets Noons apart from other platforms. Um, and secondly, it is designed for the emerging world, for the developing world. So certain countries that uh, are available on the platform uh, that would not be available if it was a US-based company, for example, because of compliance or regulations or whatever it may be, those people matter as well too. Those people cannot be forgotten in this financial global conversation. So that's why I'm proud to be a part of this platform and this project. Uh, but I also know that there's a lot of work ahead of us. There's always ways to improve there's always new conversations to have with people on the ground. And that's what I was doing on my trip as well, is trying to listen as much as possible to see how we can create these corridors and opportunities um, uh, for uh, as solutions. Because when money is continuously flowing, this is when actual activity can happen. And that's where prosperity can come from. And uh, I... I, I'm very appreciative of the feedback that we've received thus far, and I look forward to being able to work on this project moving forward in the future. I've seen people ask, um, what makes Noons different? I know you, 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 you've touched on a few things, but you know I've seen conversation online that goes like, what makes Noons different from the other P2P platforms that have been around? Maybe mind clarifying that. Yeah, I mean, I think the biggest the biggest difference is wanting to create a product that has the developing world in mind first and foremost um, by providing the payment methods that people in those respective markets, uh, emerging markets, utilize on a daily basis. One of the main reasons why I think, for example, Kenya is such a leader when it comes to global adoption of Bitcoin is because that area of the world is so fertile when it comes to digital money because, you know, and PESA had such a positive effect on that region of the world. You know, there's no need for 
a level of education on what digital money is because people have been using it for years already. But now how can we open up that channel to the rest of the world, not just to East Africa or to Africa, for example? How can we financially connect, David, Africa to the rest of the world? That's how I see it. So when you build a product around that kind of model, that really differentiates you from the rest of the pack. Um, every platform has its benefits and every platform has its room for improvement. Um, I also believe that us being on the ground and having the experience in these markets that are extremely complex and nuanced when it comes to um, payment rails uh, and different type of financial systems that I don't need to, you know, uh, tell you about because unfortunately there are many um, difficulties, I guess is the best word that I can, I can use. Uh, that's the best way uh, for us to find a solution is from the people themselves. So our ground effort, I guess you can say, is to create advocates in these different regions of the world and allow them to push the product feedback moving forward because they are the best teacher. The people on the ground are the best teacher and we have to be the student um, to, to, to learn the lessons that they can share with us to better our product. So. If I could pinpoint one thing, it would be the commitment that we have to the people on the ground. My next question would be on self-custody. I mean, are you a big proponent of self-custody? And if you are, uh, what are you doing in, in that direction? David, to be honest with you, again, before I learned about Bitcoin, uh, for example, not your keys, not your coins. Um, and we've seen so many different um, projects in the past couple of years that have been dishonest with the Bitcoin ecosystem that have been dishonest with their users on user funds and how they uh, yeah, utilize them. And it's a, it's a, it's a very real threat. And so my biggest, I guess, uh, advocacy is for self custody, whatever Bitcoin that you have on a peer to peer marketplace, like, like noons, for example, Whatever you want to trade with, keep on your wallet. Whatever you're not going to use, self-custody and, and, and put it on in, in, in a cold wallet. Um, I'm a big advocate for this. And one thing that um, we are doing within the foundation is we have a partner called Seed Signer, which is basically a do-it-yourself um, uh, seed signing uh, project that allows you to cold storage or self-custody your Bitcoin. We have a, a brand and in foundation partnership with them. In fact, um, this past trip that I took last week to Africa, um, I was um, through a grant that, that Ray provided us because Ray's a huge believer when it comes to self-custody, huge advocate for self-custody. Uh, he put his Bitcoin where his mouth is and he donated 40 seed signers that I was distributing amongst individuals that I was able to meet with and advocating for them to be able to self custody their Bitcoin. And this is, a, this is a tool that not many people have on the continent, unfortunately. Why? Because there's not maybe access to it. It may be too expensive, or there may be a lack of education or all three, all of the above, David. So it's in, in an effort to spread education around self custody. We were also able to provide a small group of people, of course, um, but an impactful group of people with those uh, seat signers. And so I wish I was able to have seen you while I was on the continent. I would have definitely uh, had one ready for you, but I, I have one in my bag ready uh, next time I'm on the continent and we meet with, with each other because it's important. It's important for all of us to advocate for this and push for this um, because this is the, the best way that people can protect themselves. Uh, for, for not having their their Bitcoin taken. Yeah, it's obviously uh, you know a huge discussion right now, and I think you know a lot of people are waking up to, to the importance of self custody. Um, so Yusuf, you know, as we wind up, um, I know you have you know other initiatives. Uh, you know, I know you have another initiative as well around. Uh, you know, tell us more about you know the next initiative. You know, the beautiful thing about the work that we do, David, is that the work never stops. And it's a it's a blessing to be able to continue this work. Um, I'm very privileged, uh, very fortunate to be able to 
have these relationships with these communities and be able to connect with them. One of the main things that I've seen traveling in the developing world, uh, whether it's you know Southeast Asia, uh, Latin America, uh, in many parts of Africa, the access to water is a huge cause for concern. Access to clean water. But not only access to clean water, but the vehicle in which you are transporting that water is also an issue. So the past few years, I've been studying uh, the usage of the jerry can, which is a, is a symbol that's synonymous to, to the world when it comes to the water crisis. And I thought to myself, well, how is it possible for these, for these women, these young children, and even men to carry these jerry cans three to six kilometers every single day after walking, you know, hours um, and hours um, to retrieve this contaminated water from these wetlands, for example. How were they able to carry this water over time without, you know, damaging their, their, their bodies? Um, and I thought to myself, well, why not create a solution for this problem? We may not be able to rid or solve the world of the water crisis, but what if we had an alternative solution to how that water is carried from place to place, right? To, to, to lessen and ease the burden. So the Jerry Can project that we have is a project where we are redesigning um, the, the Jerry Can to make it something that carries more water, but is of less weight, and most importantly, more ergonomically effective for an individual to be able to carry, whether it's a woman, man, or even child. We have a mechanism. I, I, I wish I had it with me. I could have I could have showed you, but I can definitely send you some photographs. And uh, I've been carrying it around here at the Bitcoin conference, and people have been asking me questions. It's a jerry can that has handlebars all around it for ease of being able to carry it. Um, it has a concave side where you can actually put it on top of your head. As you know better than I do, many people uh, carry things on their heads, um, especially mothers. They're carrying these babies on their backs or in front of them and carrying things on the top of their heads because they understand how strong our heads are. But you know, to carry something that has such weight over a long period of time can cause a lot of damage to the body. So how can we ease this? And so for us, we want to create a Bitcoin centric kind of project where through the distribution of these new jerry cans we take two old jerry cans that are damaged contaminated whatever it may be we melt that plastic down then we add filament onto that and we create a new mold so for every two jerry cans we create a brand new one that can carry more weight more water excuse me it weighs less and is much easier to be able to transport for individuals in Africa, in Latin America, and, and, and the rest of the world for that matter. So for the Bitcoin ecosystem to take the lead on solving a problem that affects billions of people, literally billions of people, David, around the world, is something that I'm extremely, extremely uh, excited for. I love what drives you, you know, with some of these initiatives. And I think that is, I think that's where the power lies. Um, and I think you forgot to mention, uh, how is this Jerkan project funded? Purely through Bitcoin donations. And I want to emphasize that this product came to life because of my travels in Africa. And so I want to manufacture this when we scale this project in Africa. Um, to be able to provide jobs for those individuals on the ground, but also for us to showcase that Africa is a land fertile with entrepreneurship and opportunity for manufacturing. And it is possible to scale this project on the continent itself. So it should begin in Africa and spread to the rest of the world. But Africa should definitely lead it, lead the charge here. Wow, that's exciting, that's exciting. Um... I think that might just be one of my favorite uh, initiatives that you've done. Um, yeah, I mean, thank you again, Yusuf. I think uh, you're doing an amazing work uh, with your initiatives, with your not-for-profit, um, you know, initiatives on the continent. Um, maybe as we wind up, um, 
you know, for for projects or for you know people who are moved by what you're doing, how can they work with you? How can they reach out? I certainly appreciate that, and we welcome anyone and everyone that wants to take part in this. Um, many people think that they need to donate one Bitcoin to support the work that we do. That's not the case. In fact, many of the projects that we've been able to accomplish has come through connections. So if there is an individual that wants to raise awareness of our work, that is a huge plus for us. Um, folks that want to learn more about what we're doing. We are always open to sharing information and being as transparent as we possibly can. So I would kindly ask anyone that wants to learn more to follow us on social media. We are very active on Twitter. Uh, we are very active and engaging with, um, with, with donors and people that are just interested. So our Twitter handle is at built with BTC. It's B U I L T. We are more answer any all questions that folks may have. And I look forward to hearing, hopefully, from people, especially in Kenya, um, who are interested in the work that we're, we're trying to accomplish. Indeed, uh, thank you again, Yusuf, for, for these initiatives. Um, you know, great job. I, I think uh, for all our listeners, I think you should definitely follow uh, Build with BTC on Twitter. And uh, again, Yusuf, thank you for gracing our podcast today. We really appreciate this guy. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. Thank you.